we have been doing this bracket throughout the week, the 64 best K-State football wins of all time. This is really, um, this is like my Mona Lisa. If there was something that I was born to do, it is rank K-State football wins, particularly Snyder 1.0 K-State football wins. So I had a lot of fun putting this together. Yesterday, you guys voted through the first round of the novelty bracket. We have divided them into four regions. Novelty, sentimental, statement, and upset. And novelty yesterday put Texas A&M, the four-overtime win in 2011, on to the next round. No issues there. They beat the 16 seed to 2014 West Virginia game. I mean, look, I needed a game. I remembered K-State had one rushing yard and still won that game. All right. Obviously, four overtime advances there. Now, here's where I have a point of contention. 2001 USC, nice win. K-State wins 10-6. to In the 8-9 matchup, it went up against K-State 26, Indiana State 25 from 1991. You youngins out there on Twitter, I should have expected, would not have known enough about this to appreciate. I was only two when it happened. I just know about it because it's one of my dad's favorite games, and he always told me about it. But it was the first year that there was the rule that you could like return a two-point try for two points the other way. It was the first year that that was a rule. And K-State is trailing Indiana State 25-24 to after an Indiana State touchdown late in the game. Indiana State tries to go for two, right, as you should. Mm-hmm. Because puts you up by three, does you no good to kick the extra point Sycamores and go up by two. Sycamores were ahead of their time with the analytics. Exactly. And K-State intercepts the two-point try and runs it back for two points to go ahead 26-25 to 25 and win the game. Now, if we're talking about novelty... That should have won. I mean, I feel like slept on as an eight seed, right? I mean, I don't know who the selection committee was here, but boy, slept on as an eight seed and then upset in the first round. I think Indiana State got done dirty here. Yeah, no, Indiana State should have moved on, and honestly, I would have had a tough time picking that next game between 4 OT and m and then, you know, the pick two against Indiana State. Yeah, because you don't a see great a game, matchup. You don't see a, a game one like that now. You just don't see it. I mean, you do not get round of 32 matchups that good, typically. No. That way, we have missed out. I mean, listen, 10-6 at USC, yeah, it was playing at USC. Ugh. Very, very rare Power 5 road game under Bill Snyder. But, like, K-State didn't play that well at all. Uh, they, L. Roberson completed about 10% of his passes that day, and I mean, Josh Gobi ran for a lot of yards, but it was not a very... I mean, most, the, the most entertaining thing that came out of that game, and I say entertaining, the most memorable, how about <laughs> that? most memorable thing that came out of that game was Troy Polamalu with his dirty hit on Aaron Lockett. Probably wasn't entertaining for Aaron Lockett. No, probably not. So I, I have an issue there with you guys. But hey, I'm leaving it up to Twitter. Twitter decides, Twitter votes. Now, 23-20, to 20, the four seed, K-State over a and in 96. That was a big win at the time. This is where I get to give you a little history lesson here, Mason. Okay. At the time, so that's 1996. You're over halfway through the decade. Yep. At the time, that was only the third home loss for Texas A&M in the 90s. They did not lose at Kyle Field. That was, that was pretty good. Like, hardcore wrecking crew days for Texas A&M. Uh, Chris Canty. Forced a fumble, recovered a fumble. I think forced forced a fumble late in that game. There was a fumble that gave K-State the ball back late in the game, preserved the win. That was a giant win to go win at Texas A&M, first year of the Big 12. Uh, it beat out K-State 44, Oklahoma State 21, 13 seed from 1999. I am partial to that game. K-State fell behind 21 to nothing. 21 to nothing in Stillwater and then poured on 44 on answer. Joe Hall, I believe, had a big game. Um, laser focused. He was, yes, I'm a laser focused. That is correct. Um, I'm trying to remember the receiver. God, Matt Hall would kill me because I can't remember the receiver's name right now. Uh, Nelson, if you're listening out there, now just hit the group text. Please let me know what receiver yeah. it is that I'm. George Williams. Is he the guy that had a big game in '99? Anyway, um, I'm totally fine with AM moving on there. That was a big win. Now we have. A bull win in the 5-12 matchup, which is K-State 24, Washington 20 from 99 against K-State 20, Iowa State 19 from 2017. We we all remember the 12 seed here. Yeah. 12 seeds are dangerous. We know that. Always lethal. Skyler Skyler Thompson, back of the end zone, Isaiah Zuber. I gave it that 
as like, hey, here is what to remember about this game. It was the play on the last play of the game. You're you, trying to make a case that I'm underselling yeah, it. Yeah, you sold it short, definitely. Because there were so many things that had to go K-State's way there to win that game. Because they put together a really nice drive to get down there and execute on the final play. And then even that Iowa State possession before, you know, the Cyclone fans are going to say that there should have been pass interference, stuff like that, because there was a flag or two that was picked up down the stretch of that game. You really sold it short, and it definitely shouldn't have been a 12 seed, and that's why it advanced. I think it gets to the next round. Well, the th- I mean, I actually, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. You know how I feel about bowl games. They I mean nothing. I don't value the bowl wins as much as some people do. Which actually includes the Washington game, twenty four to twenty, but it was it was a nice bowl win. It was the eleventh win of the season, and the thing that stands out there to win the game. What is more K State than this? A twenty play, ninety two yard, ten minute touchdown drive to win the game. Twenty plays, ninety two yards. That's hey, impressive. To hell of a drive. I would have advanced Washington, but I'm also partial to Snyder one point over Snyder two point oh, and that that's what carries the day for me. Twitter decides. So our next matchup is 96 A&M against 2017 Iowa State. To the bottom half of the bracket, another bowl win here. K-State over Arizona State, 34 to 27 in 2002. I actually, even though it's a six seed, I enjoy that game more than the Washington game um, because it, it was come from behind fashion. K-State was a heavy favorite, heavy favorite. Wildcats thought they should have been in the Orange Bowl. Probably, I mean, I know a young John at the time <laughs> definitely thought K State should have been in the Orange Bowl. I'd have to go back and look at everything uh, again closely to figure that out now. But K State was snubbed, and then it looked like it was headed for another like '98 Purdue situation where K State's just not playing very well in a bowl game. They're supposed to win by a lot. Terrell Suggs, defensive end, you may have heard of him. Have heard of him? Absolutely clobbered L. Roberson at one point in that game for a strip sack, and world it was champion, not looking Terrell good. Terrell Suggs. Yeah, that's right. Kansas City Chiefs world champ. And then K-State came all the way back. You know, Roberson hit Derek Evans for a touchdown pass late in the game. That was a fun one. As far as bowl games go, I thought that was a fun one. I don't think I would have advanced it, though, because the 11 seed here is 24-23, K-State over Iowa State 2009 at Arrowhead. Do we love anything more than beating Iowa State? No. Do we love anything more than ripping Iowa State's heart out? Does it get more ripping Iowa State's heart out than Iowa State scores the game-tying touchdown with a minute left and then K-State blocks the extra point to keep it from being the game-tying touchdown. I had a blast. That was one of the, true story, that was one of the last K-State football games I attended as a fan before I went down this whole venture of being a media guy. So I have very fond memories of that. I would have advanced Iowa State there. Yeah, I can't, man, I can't believe that that one actually didn't make it past that. It was probably the closest one we had. I also think that this just showcases how much fun it is to see K-State beat Iowa State because they showed up four times in the novelty bracket, and the only team that showed up two times other than them was Texas A&M. So Iowa State truly does lose some heartbreakers to K-State. They do. Now, speaking of, this is the biggest travesty, and I mean a travesty, of the entire (laughs) novelty region. I don't care that much about bowl games. A, we had a 14 over 3 upset here. The maize and blue, though. The 14 seed, K State over Michigan in 2013, 31 to 14. It beat maybe the greatest comeback win in school history for K State. 1999, Iowa State. Cats trail 28 to 7 in Ames. Adam Helm is playing quarterback. At the helm. Adam Helm is playing quarterback. A walk on is playing quarterback. And K-State rips Iowa State's heart out in large part because they were very dumb and they punted to David Allen, who wound up running one back for a touchdown. And it set the stage for K-State to rip off 28 straight points and win in Ames. Massive win. I believe that was early in the season, too. And there were some doubts about what K-State was going to be after 98. Lost a lot of parts from that 98 team. It was a massive win and a fun win and a giant comeback win. K-State beat Brady Hoke in 2013. Mm, Brady Hoke. Those Bradys that come from Michigan. Brady Hoke. John's upset because Daniel Sams didn't have the big day. It was Jake Waters throwing to Tyler Lockett for a hat trick. Well, you know what? Daniel Sams threw a beautiful touchdown pass to Tyler Lockett in that game. 
and it, it's the one pass, well, outside of the Auburn game. Is that the one it's, he dropped? It's one of two passes that I saw Tyler Lockett drop his entire career. Yeah, yeah sit him right in the hands, <laughs> dropped it. D. Sams didn't get his touchdown pass. And at that point, career done. Got to so, start to wonder if Tyler Lockett had it out for Daniel Sams. You're right, Mitch. You're right. Now, here's one that, to me, is also very disappointing, but I understand. Tough draw for Cincinnati. The 7-10 matchup, yeah. The 7-10 matchup here. We have K-State 38, Iowa State 35 in 2015 is the 7. The 10 is K-State 23, Cincinnati 21 in 1995. 1995 Cincinnati is top five favorite K-State football game all time for me. I don't know why. As a kid, I remember listening to it on the radio with my dad, and I remember Mitch Holtis going nuts. On the last play, it was a 22-yard touchdown pass on the very last play of the game for K-State to win. Matt Miller to Kevin Lockett. I love that game. And I loved watching the highlight video of it, which you can find on YouTube now, 95, over and over again, watching that play in the drive at the end of the game. A pretty forgettable game for K-State outside of that last play. They should have won the game by more, but I just I have a soft spot for it. And even as much as the Iowa State meltdown in 2015 – is something that I take a lot of happiness from. I just, I would have advanced 95 Cincinnati. But 2015, Paul Rhodes, the game that got him fired, he's up with a minute 30 left with the ball on first and 10 and manages, despite being up by seven at that point, to lose the game in regulation. It was a pretty epic fail. Yeah, I just think tough draw for Cincinnati there because just like this Iowa State game and going back to the top with like Indiana State and that game. The true novelty of this one is really what had to push it forward. And so I was really hoping that it wouldn't be close and, you know, surprisingly it wasn't. I think enough people felt like there was enough there to push them past and get Iowa State into the next round. That is one of the best games that I've ever been to, and it's unfortunate that it was wasted on a 6-6 and team. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, such a forgettable season, I I don't know. 2015 just was not a fun season. Those last two games were enjoyable, though. Okay. All right. Well, they both make an appearance in the bracket. Uh, finally, the 215 matchup here. It's K State 21, Texas Tech 14 in 1996. That was the first Big 12 football game ever played. It did advance past uh, K State beating Missouri 24 to 14 in 2003. The reason that game is on there is because Darren Sproles set the single game rushing record at K State with 273 yards against Mizzou. I remember freezing my absolute butt off watching that game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think K-State and Tech, that was the obvious one that should have moved on in my mind just because you get to win the first Big 12 game, but everybody loves them some Darren Sproles. Mitch probably made 50 other Twitter accounts to vote for Darren Sproles there. I think that was Mario Smith who broke up a pass near the goal line. Tech was driving to, uh, to tie the game late, but a broken up pass there won the game for K-State. Okay, Mitch, I'm sorry, I railroaded you apparently. I had a thought on the 95 season and beating Cincinnati with it being a walk-off win, which which I believe the Iowa State win in 2015 was also a walk-off yep. for the Cats to get that done. I love good pandemonium. And I also want to point out that 95 season, four teams in the Big 12 finished in the top 10 in the country, including K-State. Cats had two of those wins against the three, the other three that were in the top 10. So I just want to say that was a pretty damn good year. It really got started with beating Cincinnati on that walk-off for Kevin Lockett. 95 defense, I believe, finished number one in total defense in the country. That may have been the best defense that has ever played at K-State was the 1995 defense. If they had played more offense, they wouldn't have had to beat Cincinnati on the last play of the game. Fun fact about 95, after beating Cincinnati, the next three games, K-State shut out their opponents. Three straight games. They did. One of those was uh, 67-0 over Akron. What was next? Well, I'm just I, the the reason I bring that up is because on the on the highlight video, Mitch Holtis says, and K State wins 67 to zip over the zips of Akron. 